Hello and welcome to episode one of the Youth Squad Legends series with Wrexham. For those that are unfamiliar with the concept of Youth Squad Legends, we take a League Two team, we remove all the real players, and in their place we sign up Youth Academy players and regens. Players generated in the game itself and you might be thinking why on earth would you do that it makes for such a dynamic save there's going to be loads of twists and turns in this series so buckle up there's going to be heroes there's going to be villains made it's going to be such a wild ride but first we got to create a manager we'll start off with this lad i think now from a previous series there were so many options to choose from that could have potentially become managers in the future. But I think I would be kicking myself if I didn't use the marauding South Korea midfielder, Jang Sung Chan. It's a very old Jang Sung Chan at that. Hey, I've got a problem. I can't actually put a hyphen in. It's all right, I'll just use a space. So we start in League Two, make our way up to League One, then the Championship, and finally landing in the Premier League. I really don't like the look of that critical domestic success but ryan reynolds and rob McElhenney, they're putting some serious money behind this project and of course yeah they would expect the very best try and get the stadium that looks most like the race course ground honestly none of them look like the race course ground actually i was there in may i went to the kings of the leon gig there really really nice time and you can tell that the community the area is getting revitalized it seems like we've run out of space you know what we're in wales i'm gonna put the welsh name in yeah how easy is that quickly change things to red and we will be done with the uh, stadium customization i don't really want to get into much detail there this first episode is all about meeting the new players it's the most exciting time for any youth squad legends fan we don't have any sliders set up just yet so i'm going to try legendary to start off with see if the ai can cross and if it can't cross then we'll go back to world class and make some really difficult sliders to balance out that gameplay okay it's time to go now as this loads up i might as well give this thing some backstory in relation to welcome to Wrexham. You see, already in season two, Rob and Ryan are claiming that the club is running unsustainably. The club is completely and wholly unsustainable. So in our timeline, what the owners decide to do is actually play very smart and invest heavily in the future. Because they have such a successful TV show on their hands, the Premier League has become a necessity and not just a pipe dream. But for them to financially compete with the billionaires up there, the club and the TV show have to generate serious money with very little outgoing expenditure, hence why they look towards the Youth Academy. It's not a bad story to say that it took about five minutes. Okay, Jang! It's his moment in the spotlight. He's going to be holding up the Wrexham shirt. Let's get to work. So immediately we're prompted to do our tactical vision, but I'm going to skip this. We're playing on the PC version of the game and I can edit names and such. So what I'm thinking when it is available, we shouldn't hire random coaches. We should hire YSL players of the past. That would be really, really cool. Now, due to this coach feature being a new addition into FC 24, we've not got the editing capability just yet. However, the great news is that I can expand the name pool right off the bat here. Yeah. And what an amazing save this is already turning out to be. Our first player is a Liechtenstein goalkeeper. What are the odds of a Liechtenstein player getting generated? I don't think I've ever seen that. Tobias Tanner seems to be the highest overall player from this youth academy as well. So he will get promoted straight away. Gary Purcell, a central attacking midfielder from Australia. Ooh, he's got a play style. He's press proven. Nice. Unfortunately, he's 15, so he can't get promoted right now i am getting play styles all over the place tomoharu ioka 50 overall right midfielder traits of tiki taka and relentless i know relentless is really good on a winger so he could be absolutely fantastic for us even more traits samuel marino chip shot incisive pass tiki taka seems like we're playing tiki taka lads i love it i love the fact that the forward is from venezuela oh a conquo we have to have a full squad of generated players by the start of the season which is just over a month's time we've only got three in the first team 
at this moment. We're going to have to search for players and have a look at the free agents out there in the world. Let's go through them very quickly. Abbas Acosti, a Ghanaian, 5'9 striker. Sarindari, Romanian, 6'2 striker. Could be really good. This Hungarian lad's called Bentz. Great name. And then we have two Northern Irish players. Philip Miller, right back, and Ronan O'Brien, central attacking midfielder. Who's, <laughs> he's terrible. He's so bad. Out of the five available, it seems like these two strikers at the top here are the uh, best players of quite a bad bunch. Oh, more play styles. Hang on. Power shot for Abbas Acosti. Love that. Dory's got acrobatic. Bentz doesn't have anything. Nice. Miller doesn't have anything. And Ronan O'Brien has long ball pass. Really good for a central attacking midfielder. Bringing in these five players alongside the three players that we promoted from the Youth Academy means that we only need to sign three more players up. He doesn't give us a wage straight away. So I'm just going to throw some money at him. Look, the best thing about being at Wrexham here is that we don't really need to penny pinch. Abbas Acosti is a wicked name, by the way. So he's 62 overall. Our best player coming in from the free agents is only 62 overall. No overpowered Buster Mantate type figures here, which is great. The start of last series, we were carried by a Mexican centre-back that was so much better than everybody else. Sarin only wants £600 a week, and he comes in at 62 overall. Sarin might be a player that stays here a long, long time. Now, here's Benz Mac. Um, <laughs> what a name. Look, if I'm pronouncing any of these wrong, tell me down in the comments section and we'll fix them up. £300 a week. Nicely done. Welcome to the club. Only 53 overall, but it'll do for now. Philip Miller is in for £350 a week. Oh my goodness, he's 62 overall. That came out of left field a little bit. Okay, Ronan O'Brien is our final free agent signing. He's definitely not going to be 62 overall. Another £350 a week splashed. You know what? 55 overall, especially with the trait that he's got. I'll take it. Now, to get the rest of the players we need, we're going to youth staff and hiring some scouts. Their first monthly scout report will come back just before we start our season and we already face a dilemma. You see, there's a good Welsh scout and he's really, really expensive. But I do think we need to cough up the money here. Hey, look, Rob and Ryan, they seriously want to invest in this. You've got to appreciate it. So the three scouts we've got, Daniel Rose, who is the scout that the game has generated for us, Tony Pritchard, who's obviously the chief scout, and Tobias Sandberg from Sweden. It's an excellent scouting team to say that this is the first episode. We're going to play smart here, and we're just going to look for physically strong players. After consulting my Patreon members, we are heading off to Marley and San Marino on scouting trips. Tony Pritchard, well, he's staying in Wales because we always try and find some homegrown talent. If you yourself would like to suggest nations to scout, please head on over to my Patreon page. That and many other rewards linking to the series will be available, including stuff like adding players to the save. So yes, you are really helping me out, but also you get a little bit back in return. Now comes the cruel moment where I have to transfer this Paul Mullin, but the rules are the rules. He's already a hero at Wrexham. Time to make some new ones. For this international friendly tournament, of course, we're going to choose the one with the most money. And then we are going to advance to the... Hello? Wait, the first game is actually on the 29th of July. Ooh, that's not good. Nothing that PC FIFA can't fix, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds movie star charm coming in clutch. Sweet talk the scouts a little bit and they're coming in slightly quicker. Quick enough for the first game. Very, very strange to see. I think this is the first career mode where I don't actually think filling in an entire 11 normally is possible or at least incredibly unlikely. Transfer offers coming in all the time for our players. We'll go through who's left just before our first game. First match pre-season, we drew 1-1 against Wigan. Only lost 2-1 against Lorient, which doesn't seem too bad. There's another 2-1 loss there as we finish off our pre-season tour. Early monthly scout reports are here. You'll notice that I've edited all the scouted players' names. So that's a big improvement having them on screen straight away instead of leaving the names blank. Let's have a look then. So the best player is 15. So we can't really sign him up, leaving us with these two. And uh, Cesarini, even though he's a more attacking player positionally, apparently he's got better defending. So I think 
I'm gonna go with Cesarini. He's way taller. Sign him up. I'm hoping that in these three scouting reports, I can at least find one from each of the countries. Wales has obviously got us a gem there. Six foot five could be really good for us. Six foot one. And sadly, Marcus Marks, great name, is 15 years old. Not high potential. So even though he's got a great name, we'll pass on him. For the other three, though, welcome to Wrexham. Quite literally. Sadly, the Marley report is a nightmare. Two of them are 15. Soleimani Diara, I guess he's passable for the first few games, but I think he'll get replaced. We have a couple of extra playing styles. Taylor Butler's got first touch. Luke Williams has Tiki Taka. Man, it really is pushing me to... Be a ticky tack aside. Okay, everybody other than Gary Purcell is into the first team. Almost time to take in our first game away against Wimbledon, and it will be the only game of this episode. This is just an introduction episode that welcomes the players in, that welcomes you into the series. Episode two, it's going to be more of a dive in looking at coaching training you name it we'll probably do and all the bits and bobs that we're going to implement in this series right i'll just flick through these transfers there's legends there's heroes heading out the door here so give them a round of applause for the service but well, now it's youth squad legends time yeah we've got no match preparation wimbledon's playing on the counter attack simple enough 4-4-2 four, four, for the opponents now before last series i was dead set on playing the 4-2-4 four, four, but i'm not actually that worried about it now i think we will be quite tactically fluid oh, it's really really nice to have center backs right from the get-go we've actually got quite a nice spread of players here cesarini yeah he's gonna have to play defense but he actually has decent defensive properties. He goes up by 12 in that position. It's a weak but well-balanced team with two pretty deadly forwards on paper. Okay, let's just have a feel for the team. Super excited to do this. Wimbledon against Wrexham. We'll also get a nice feeling for the difficulty levels here. If we are at all competent, obviously... It will need to be sorted out, and the camera needs to be sorted out. Close it down. Big tackle there. Yes. Oh, my God. Al Hamadi, within three, four minutes of this game, has smashed one into the top corner. Welcome to League Two, I guess. It's always quite the treat to go from a Champions League winning team to one that just lets in goals like that. I'm 2-0 down and it's not even been 10 minutes. Yo, maybe it's because I haven't trained the boys. Because we haven't focused enough. Because we haven't touched upon the more intricate details of career mode. Maybe with additional play styles we would have been much, much better suited. Oh, hello there! We scored! Hey, the Romanian strikers bagged! Basically, what we're seeing here is absolutely no defensive capabilities for both teams. Everything looks so different, so my commentary might be a little bit scruffy here and there as I just get used to the new graphics, to be honest. We're clearly bad, but hey, at least the five-man defense is keeping us in the game. Acosti might get through with the right pass. I did say Acosti, didn't I? I definitely didn't say O'Brien. It's Bence Macca! By the way, my girlfriend researched it and it's Bence. But I desperately want to call him Bence Macca. Okay, what I'm seeing here, Cesarini's actually got a decent passing range on him. Can he? He's pinging it left and right. He definitely shouldn't be playing centre-back. CDM might be a call-in, though. Owen's looking like top quality, but you'd probably expect that. Oh! We are bad at corners again. Totally forgot the Youth Academy players just simply can't defend them. I know how a corner kick works, thank you very much. I don't need a tutorial on it. Okay, I might need a tutorial on it. Yoka! Good effort. I haven't felt this comfortable on a FIFA since, like, FIFA 12, FIFA 13. Have they actually made a solid, solid game? Am I actually giving them credit? Wait, no. Careful, Curtis. Don't rave them up because usually they disappoint. This is going in sick. Not too sure about Tobias Tanner in the net. But because he's from Liechtenstein and because he's come from our youth academy, it's such a rarity. I do want him to succeed. I really do. And I will give him every single bit of patience I have. We're slow. We're not agile. We're leaving really big defensive holes. But I have seen worse. Yay! Tanner's made a save! Come on, then! Not the biggest of goalkeepers, is he? Oh! 
Then smack off! Get the ball! Santa's collected it. He's just thrown himself on it. That could have been the worst on goal in the world. Hey, you know who's looking like the best player on this page? It's Ben Smacko. Yes, it is. It's going to be the third year of hyper motion where the AI, the higher difficulty AI, just decides not to cross. Surely they've realized that Legendary and Ultimate do not cross the ball. Oh, talking about crossing the ball. Costi with a nice takedown. Couldn't really find the space there. This flash is a brilliance. But you're finding the bright spots in a massive grey cloud. Slid in. That should have been a penalty. Ends up in the back of the net anyway. Mmm, and our domestic success board objective is critical. That uh, is gonna be one difficult conversation with Rob and Ryan. It could be five, it is five, because Tanner has no arms! Welcome to Yuko Ike's Haiku Chronicles, with your host, Yuko Ike. Do you remember? 21st of September. I don't. Suck your mum. He's onside. Davison could make it six. It's a day to kind of forget here. It just goes to show what kind of mountain we're gonna climb. These defenders simply can't keep up. Acosti finds Ioka. Might be the worst performing player in the game. There's another goal. Big man Romanian finding the back of the net again. Good work, Dari. Hey, after all the problems that we had with Stockport, trying to find the right strike and trying to find the right balance up front. If we can get like a quality striker straight away for Exum, I'd be super, super pleased. Full time, yup. It's Wimbledon 6, Wrexham 2. So that's episode one finished. I can't wait to show you what I have in store for this series, but it's gonna have to wait till next episode. This is being cut safe. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, then please give it a like. If you're not subscribed around here yet, then press the red box. It's gonna be a wicked series. Hit the bell icon for mobile notifications. Massive thanks to everybody supporting me on patreon you guys are legends please check out that link below you can get some crazy rewards regarding this series before i go i want to say a big thank you to new patrons andreas grunville and clash Row. cheers guys keeping a roof over my head absolute legends see you next time bye bye